Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality, to your health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin disease like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is no miracle at all. It is simply the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the bright side. Try to call in early so we can get as many calls as possible. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about supplementation, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program like the one designed by Dr. Wallach, we can help you do that. If you have questions about ingredients or formulations or skin health or the longevity products or the longevity business, and, of course, if you have a success story or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, we want to hear from you. 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team and help start a longevity and start a longevity business, we can help you do that. 866-735-2470. 866 866- 735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben team. You can also head over to my blog, pharmacistben.com or brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and purchase products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website. That's pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or brightsideben.com. And, of course, if you're interested in purchasing any of our Truth Treatment skin health products, you can head over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Make sure you take a especially long look at our retinol 5% gel. All right, good morning. Good morning to all, and welcome to The Bright Side. This is your nutritional and health program that breaks down the, breaks down health challenges to simple steps for reversal. We live in this crazy world of manipulation and deception and, and politics and lies. We're, we're misled and we're lied to in so many places. It's nearly impossible to know where to turn for the truth or what to believe. Contrary to the messaging that we get about health from our so-called expert doctors and drug companies, and unfortunately even from so-called alternative practitioners, which are often nothing more than opinions and assertions utilizing infantilizing baby phrases, good for you and bad for you, and the repetition of myths and mythology. This is what passes for mainstream medical wisdom. The bright side is not about assertions. It's not about myths. It's about common sense. It's about real results. It's about truths based on personal experience. My personal experience as a therapist and your personal experience as a patient. What you hear in this program is the distillation of my 30 years of experience with patients like yourselves using the ideas that we talk about every day on this program. Results that you can experience for yourself, not in 30 days, not in three weeks, but usually in 24 hours or less. No matter what your health challenges are, people, no matter how long your health challenges have been going on, no matter how deteriorated the condition of your body is, all chronic degenerative health crises can be reversed. Not because because of me and not because of what we what you hear on this program but because of you because of the body because the body wants to be healthy what we call disease is really the body telling us that something's wrong in fact it's really the body telling us what is wrong if we listen to the message of disease if we listen to the message of disease 
we'll know everything we need to know about reversing it. Doctors, drugs, and the protocols and the regimens of the medical model are about telling the body to shut up. They're not about listening to they're not about listening to the body, they're about shutting the body up. They're about drugging the body into submission, radiating and carving the body up into submission. The bright side message on the contrary is about listening, listening to pain, listening to symptoms, listening to the body's diseases as we listen to our babies crying. Got a letter here from Ratna Chintamaneni. I hope I said that right. Ratna Chintamaneni says Dear Mr. Ben, I would like to join your radio show to provide testimonial by following your advice for the past one year. I realized after hearing archive shows, I have my body falling apart due to disease. You mentioned that it takes two hours to explain all my issues to you on the November 5th, 2014 show. That's true, as I've been listening to you and Dr. Wall. History. Before following your advice, following Indian naturopathic doctors, they're still doctors, using food as medicine, 70% 70% raw, 30% cooked for lunch. Current status, after following your advice, I'm doing well with 90% of my issues resolved. Need to work on the ring. 10% of balance yet to rectify. Mr. Chit, not Chit, I used to say this, Chin Tamaneni wants to come on the air to talk, tell his story. And I, I will be talking to Mr. Chin Tamaneni about getting on the program. But it doesn't, it's just one letter. I get these letters all the time. Dr. Wallach, Dr. Glidden, we all get these letters all the time. If you're dealing with any chronic degenerative disease, if you're on medication, you want to get off them. If your doctor is not helping you, please understand that these kind of healing results are possible for you too by following the simple, inexpensive, oftentimes free, common sense, logical, scientific strategies that we talk about on this program every day. You can experience this kind of healing as well. Eliminating problem foods, eating less foods, caloric restriction, drinking your nutrition, leveraging soups and smoothies, intermittent fasting, stabilizing blood sugar, deep breathing, activating the parasympathetic, the relaxation nervous system, using mental strategies, using emotional strategies, using spiritual strategies, getting on a good nutritional supplement program of course, your symptoms, no matter what they are, will guaranteed 100% begin to resolve. Again, not because of me, not because of the ideas, but because it's in the body's nature to heal. Unlike medicine, this is science. Medicine is about risk management. Medicine is about risk reduction. Medicine is about probability. It's not science. There are no laws of medicine. The realm of medicine, the realm of pharmacology, the realm of the medical model is about probability. Oh, you'll reduce your risk of a heart attack by 22% if you take a statin drug. Big deal. The only reason your doctor thinks it's helpful to reduce your risk of heart disease by 22% is because he doesn't know what heart disease is. The modern medical model doesn't know what disease is. So they are reduced to drugging us and radiating us and carving us up to reduce risks. Nobody's saying you're not going to get a heart attack when you're on a statin drug. They're just saying you're going to reduce the risk. Folks, if you are satisfied or if you're not satisfied with risk reduction, these are ideas of certainty. These are ideas of law. These are ideas of science, the things we talk about on this program every day. Every day. If you have a digestive problem and you stop eating, you are not going to have a digestive problem. You can't have a digestive problem if you don't eat. That's a law. That's scientific. That's a fact. Now, obviously, you have to eat eventually, but the point is is that these strategies that we are talking about here and we talk about every day on this program are tried and true and work every time. And they're as simple as removing the bad stuff, putting in the good stuff, and letting the divine force, God, nature, whatever you want to call it, do the work. No drugs necessary, no doctors necessary, no pharmacy necessary, no me, no pharmacist then necessary. All right, so we've been talking about hormones and hormone health for a couple of weeks now, particularly as it regards the skin. Hormones can be thought of as the manifestation, the first manifestation of everything that happens. All right, we're back on the bright 
Skyline Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. If you miss a program or you want to review a program, they're all up. And there's a search engine, too, that you can search for a specific subject matter, topics, brightsideben.com, also benfuchsarchives.com. And, of course, if you'd like to check out my blog, it's pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can order Longevity products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can make some money selling Longevity products and help spread the word about how important and powerful a good nutritional supplement program can be. Of course, you can get your products at the wholesale price as well. You can find out all about it at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or... Uh, pharmacistben.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Our number today, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. Got lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in our next segment. I also have a ton of letters that uh, I've accumulated here. I'd like to get to a couple of those. So if we don't get calls, we'll start reading some letters here. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Okay, so we're talking hormones, hormone health. We've been talking about hormones for a couple of weeks. We'll probably be talking about it for a while. Hormones are the first place the body shows up. It's where the invisible world meets the visible world. I do a presentation on hormones, and I always ask people, what are hormones? And I get all kinds of answers. They're chemicals, and they're bio, bio, biochemicals, and they're involved in health, etc. And nobody really knows what hormones are and knows how to describe them. And I always tell people, hormones are magic. In the sense that there were the invisible world meets the visible world, or where the invisible world becomes the visible world. All biology, all biochemistry is initiated, begins via hormones. Hormones are the first manifestation of biochemistry, the first manifestation of biology. They're tiny, infinitesimally small, incredibly short-lived substances that are only uh, present for fractions of a second before they're destroyed uh, by the body. These hormone substances are the first manifestation of everything that happens in the body. For better or worse, they're the interface between the invisible world of thoughts and emotions and perceptions and the body. That is, every thought we think, every feeling we feel, every perception we perceive is immediately converted into a hormone. The outside world of sights and sounds and touch of thoughts and feelings are converted into hormones by the brain and from there our body is created. It's as simple as that. The outside world becomes the inside world via the interfacing action of the hormones. And this makes hormones and understanding hormones extremely important if we're going to be able to access our health. Hormones are one of two main classes of active chemicals in the body. The others are the enzymes. The two main action chemicals in the body that get everything done are the hormones and the enzymes. Now, we've talked about the enzymes in the past. I'm not going to get into that right now, although they're super-duper important. If you want to check out some fine enzyme products, go to brightsidehealthproducts.com. Of course, we've talked about the ultimate enzymes from longevity for years. Enzymes are super important. Digestive enzymes are important for digestion, and metabolic enzymes are important for the biochemistry of the body. I'm not going to get into horm- uh, enzymes now. I want to talk about hormones. We've got two main classes of hormones, but the ones we're talking about today are the endocrine hormones. Those are the main hormones in the body. You have other hormones. You've got uh, exocrine hormones, paracrine hormones, autocrine hormones. These are all very fascinating, but the main hormones that we talk about all the time are the ones that travel through the blood. They're called endocrine hormones, and they make up the science of endocrinology. And the supposed experts of these, these endocrine hormones are endocrinologists. Those are doctors of the hormones, doctors of the endocrine hormones. And if you have a, a problem with your female reproductive system or you have a problem with your thyroid or you have a problem with your thymus or your pancreas, these various glands, you'll probably go to an endocrinologist who is going to do zip to help you because he's a doctor. And all he's going to do is drug you or give you an artificial hormone. That's what they do. They drug you and they give you artificial hormones. They don't work. They don't do nothing. And the only reason we depend on these endocrinologists is because nobody tells us about how these things work. So, the main hormones, the endocrine hormones, travel travel through the blood after they're released from the brain, and then the glands. They start off in the brain, they go to the glands, and then they travel through the blood, they hit the cell with some kind of, uh, initiating some kind of chemistry, enzyme chemistry. Hormones 
initiate enzyme chemistry out of the cells. The enzymes are the actors. They represent the chemistry of the body. The hormones are the initiators. They turn things on. The word hormone means to initiate, to activate, to arouse. The Greek word is hormeo. It means to arouse. The main control points, this is so important, you guys, if you're dealing with a hormone issue and if you're ill, if you have a chronic degenerative disease, it has to be a hormone issue because hormones begin the process. They initiate everything. So this is important. What I'm going to say right now, the main control points for the hormones are thoughts and emotions and food. Check that out. Thoughts and emotions and food. Now, do you think we need a doctor for any of that? Thoughts and emotions are our business, and food is our business. That's a, by the way, this is the importance of food. When we eat food, hormones change, no matter what that food is, for better or worse. When we think a thought, our hormones change, no matter what those thoughts are, for better or worse. Likewise, with emotions. Thoughts and emotions and food are the main control points for our hormones. This is such good news for those of us looking to emancipate, to free ourselves from the tyranny of the medical model. If hormones are the initiators and nothing happens in the body without their initiation, without their inspiration, and if we control these hormones with our mental and emotional natures and with our foods, that means we have tremendous control over what happens in our bodies. No doctor required. No medical model required. No Obamacare required. No diagnostics required. No pharmacist been required. Thoughts and emotions and food. And when I talk about food, I'm talking about nutrition. And I'm also talking about, to a certain extent, oxygen. Yes, I know oxygen's not food, but it represents something that's coming into the body that nourishes us. Between thoughts and emotions and food and oxygen, you've got your control points for hormones. And because hormones regulate every single function in the body, you have your control points for regulation of everything. Thoughts, food, thoughts, emotions, food, and oxygen. Now, you've got two classes of your endocrine hormones. You've got your water ones. That's insulin, thyroid hormone, adrenaline. They call them peptides, the types of small proteins or amino acids. I'm not going to talk about those for now because the ones that I'm so excited about are the steroid hormones. Those are the fatty hormones. Those are the ones we've been talking about now for a couple of weeks. The fatty hormones are your stress management hormones. The fatty hormones are our growth and repair and fertility hormones. And when I say fatty hormones, I'm talking steroid hormones. And, oh, by the way, these fatty hormones that are so important, your stress management hormones, your growth and repair and fertility hormones, these fatty hormones, these endocrine, uh, steroid endocrine hormones, they're all derived, they're all types of cholesterol. I know I've said that before, but it bears repeating. Cholesterol is, uh, gets tweaked very slightly and becomes your steroid hormones. That makes cholesterol ridiculously important. If hormones are important and they all come from cholesterol, what does that tell you about cholesterol? What does that tell you about the absolute mentally incompetent, intellectually bankrupt, biochemically, biochemically ignorant strategy of turning off cholesterol production? Your endocrine, steroid endocrine hormones, your stress hormones, your growth and repair and fertility hormones, they're types of cholesterol. Do you think you ever want to shut down cholesterol production? Any medical professional who thinks that's a good strategy is the quintessence, the very definition of a bonehead, at least a biochemical bonehead. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're coming back with more... Back on the right side, I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. And both of, uh, both of these pages have search engines on them. If you miss a program, you can review it. Or if you have a specific topic that you're interested in, you can hit the you can head over to brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com. Just punch in whatever you want to punch in the search engine. Thank you to Peter in the U.K. for setting that one up. You can also check out my blog, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. We update both regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. Thank you to John T. Collier and Robert Lundgren for those. And you can, of course, purchase the Longevity products right off the websites or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites. Brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, tomorrow we'll continue talking about the steroid hormones. The cholesterol hormones. We should really call the steroid hormones the cholesterol hormones. 
If we called them the cholesterol hormones, we'd have a lot more respect for cholesterol, and we would certainly think twice about dumbing down cholesterol production. For you guys who are new listeners, and I know we get new listeners every day on this program, the number one reason why cholesterol, the main reason, pretty much the only reason why cholesterol levels go up is because of sugar. Cholesterol is a building substance. Sugar tells the body to build. Cholesterol goes up. It's not a reason. Elevated cholesterol is not a reason to shut down, i.e. poison cholesterol production. It's a reason to reduce your intake of sugar and to lower your insulin. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking about the cholesterol hormones. And we'll talk about a super important nutritional supplement that you can take, that you can use to help protect and help help us support the production of these cholesterol hormones. We'll do that tomorrow as we continue talking steroid hormones and the skin on the bright side. All right, I'm Pharmacy Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Oregon and say hello to my friend, Carl the Truth Raider. What is up, Carl? Greetings, buddy. Oh, welcome back, Ben. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, this, this segues perfectly, and actually i got two subjects to speak about. This segues perfectly into the topic that I wanted to discuss with you. It's uh-huh. called andropause. Oh, as opposed to menopause. As opposed to menopause. That's, that's male menopause, Andrew. Yeah, that, that's the male. Okay. And, of course, the women suffers from, from their menopause. That's for females. Yes. That's kind of confusing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the, the, you have to break down what the Greek translation or the Latin translation. Uh, Meno for moon for actually meno. means the pause of your menstrual cycle or of a woman's okay. menstrual cycle. Right, right. And andro has to do with androgen. Correct. So what's so, up? How can I help you, Carl, the truth? This is my, my, my theory that's going into why this phenomenon, why there's an increase. And say, for example, men who have uh, difficulties and struggle and have depression and have midlife crises. Okay. You know, related to andropause. Yes. Well, this is the two-year anniversary, just a little over the two-year anniversary since, uh, you know, the tragedy that I had here in Oregon. We had a, a person who was um, our director of our tennis um, the programs here, a very stable person. All of a sudden, he, he personally had some difficulties, but couldn't quite pinpoint what it was. What it was, but it's, it's possibly because it, it could have been andropause or something that it was occurring in his life, and he couldn't handle it. And he tragically decided to commit suicide. Oh, that's terrible. Now, t- yeah. Tell me how I can help you, my friend. Well, we're in between your 50s to 60s. This is a dangerous point here, uh, and men out there need to. You know, take heed and, and listen to this and make sure they keep their nutrition as high as they possibly can and take every type of nutrition that's available, supplement that they need to take in order to keep from getting these feelings of uh, like man, uh, mania or feelings of despair or panic due to these changes that, that, that occur between the right. 50s to 60s. So you can touch upon that, what, what the best thing yeah. is. Yeah, let me talk about a couple of things. That's, thank you. That's a great point. Thank you for bringing that up because we are talking about hormones. Certainly. appreciate it, Carl, the truth right I'm going to let you go here, buddy. Thank you for bringing that up, though, Carl. Uh, here's, the, here's the thing about andropause. And it's a, it is, as Carl says, it's a, it's a pretty scary time for guys. All of a sudden, our maleness goes away. Well, guess what? Uh, the antagonistic hormone to testosterone, male hormone, is estrogen. And the fastest way to bump up your estrogen and, at the same time, reduce the, the benefits or the, the effects of male hormones is to carry body fat. Female hormone is made in body fat, whether you're a man or a woman. The more body fat a man carries, the, uh, the more estrogen effects he's going to have and the less male testosterone effects he's going to have. So if you're a guy and you're dealing with a decrease in sexual performance or you're dealing with a problem with muscle building or you're feeling weak or you're losing your edge, so to speak, your mental or emotional edge at the age of 45 to 55, right around in that period, chances are pretty good that you're dealing with this andropause issue and chances are pretty good that you're dealing with with too much estrogen effects and not enough or female hormone effects and not enough male hormone effects. So the first thing you want to do is start to drop your body fat. When you reduce body fat, or even better, when you replace body fat with muscle, testosterone or male hormone benefits, male hormone effects will begin to accrue, and the female hormone effects will begin to drop down. It's kind of ironic what happens to men and women as we reach middle age, 
uh, between 45 and 55, men start to become more feminized. That's because they're carrying body fat, and also sugar, by the way, has an antagonistic connection to testosterone, or too much sugar, too much insulin, I should say, has an antagonistic effect on testosterone. As we get older and we, we start to deal with problems with insulin resistance, which is associated with too much insulin, as we begin to deal with problems associated with carrying too much body fat, our maleness starts to go away. Conversely, with women, the opposite happens. As women get older, their female hormones start to drop, and they become more masculinized. How ironic is that? As we get older, men become more feminized, and women become more masculinized. If you want to reverse that, you've got to start dealing with your hormones. You've got to start dealing with your endocrine hormones, your cholesterol hormones, your steroid hormones. For men, that means losing body fat and starting to build muscle and using nutrition that helps you handle sugar as well. Zinc is one of the superstar hormone minerals for male hormones for testosterone. It's involved with acne, it's involved with muscle building, and it's involved with sugar metabolism. All men, first of all, everybody should be supplementing supplementing with 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate, in my humble opinion, but especially men who are between the ages of 45 and 55 who are dealing with andropause. Secondly, reduce your intake of sugar and use nutrients that help your body handle sugar. Chromium and vanadium, get on the sweeties, magnesium, selenium, sulfur, alpha lipoic acid, and of course your B vitamins, all extremely important for helping the body handle sugar. That means the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and that means your sweeties, and that means, of course, the entire Mighty 90 essential nutrients. For women, the opposite. Uh, yeah, women have the opposite problem. Women are going to start to need to balance out, uh, balance out female hormones and male hormones by using things like progesterone cream or even pregnenolone. Tomorrow we'll talk about essential fatty acids. Those can be very helpful as well, and don't underestimate the importance of zinc picolinate for women. Magnesium can also be helpful for uh, menopausal issues. We're going to talk about menopause. We'll, uh, we'll probably end up talking about andropause as well. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. So, uh, long story short, Carl, lose body fat, replace body fat with muscle, use nutrients that help you handle sugar, uh, especially zinc, which has double duty as a hormone, uh, as a hormone helping mineral, and also a sugar metabolizing or a sh- uh, insulin supporting mineral as well. And then all the other ones, chromium, vanadium, your ultimate selenium, more protein. Get your butt in the gym. You actually don't even need to go to the gym. You know, you could do resistance training with a big old rubber band tied to your couch or, or your desk or a big piece of furniture and just do leg lifts or arm raises or you can use one of those uh, those big old rubber bands that have two handles on them and you could do curls with that. You can do it while you're watching TV. You don't need a membership to the gym to build muscle. But building muscle is a great way to reverse the effects of andropause. All right, thanks for your call, Carl. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get you when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Our number is 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, questions about hormone health, or if you have questions about skin care, skin health, we're here for you, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Alabama and welcome to the bright side. Is that how you say that? Did I say that right? I like that. C-H. Hi, this is C-H. C-H. Is that it? Just C-H or is it ch? It's C-H. Oh, okay. How's it going, C-H? What's going on today? Fine. How are you? I'm always, I'm calling today because I don't have the Internet. And I'll, I hear you speak on skin care a lot. Yes. But I've never paid close attention about when you talk about dry skin. Okay. Can you please talk about dry skin yes. and, how to, and how to find my way out of it. Okay, good. You know, first of all, I'm going to tell you something very interesting. I've been doing skin, uh, you may not know this, but I've been in the skin health business since 1983. I started working for the Blistex Corporation as a student. I actually worked for the guy who invented Blistex. He was a professor at the University of Colorado in, in, uh, in Boulder. One day I was walking through the basement of the School of Pharmacy and I smelled this little pepperminty smell coming out of one of the rooms. And I walked into the room and there was this little old man tinkering around some beakers and we started chatting. And next thing I knew, I was Dr. Jones' research assistant, and for the next three and a half years, while my colleagues were off getting their internship hours, pharmacists, pharmacy students need to get internship hours to become pharmacists, and while my uh, fellow students were getting their internship hours in various drugstores in, in Boulder and Denver, 
I was getting my internship hours in the Blistex lab, learning everything you could possibly want to know about skin and skin health and lips and ingredients and how you formulate products. My job was literally to make Dr. Jones's formulas. I'd come in after school and there'd be a stack of formulas that Dr. Jones would type up. This was in the pre-computer days and he would be typing up formulas and I'd have a stack of them and I would have to make them. And I learned a lot about the skin and, um, and since then I've been a, a, a lover, a fan, a connoisseur of good skin and good skin products. And I know a lot about the skin and when, and when I do my talks about doing my talks about skin, I'll always ask people about dry skin. I'll say, how many of you guys have dry skin? And invariably, everybody raises their hands. Pretty much everybody has dry skin, CH, everybody. But here's the great irony. Nobody's supposed to have dry skin because the skin has moisture factors built into it that keep the skin from being dry. Human beings arose out of the ocean millions of years ago and we evolved mechanisms, our skin evolved mechanisms for keeping the water in. So skin is not supposed to be dry and it always represents a biochemical mishap. It represents disease. It represents a health issue. It is not a moisturizer problem. And oh, what's even worse, the more moisturizer you use, the drier your skin will be. That's because when you put a moisturizer on, a typical wax and oil and, and emulsifier and, and a silicone a moisturizer, you seal the skin and you prevent the skin from reading the ambient humidity. The skin is a responsive organ that's responsive to how, mo how much moisture is in the air. And when there's not a lot of moisture in the air, we're supposed to make more moisture factors. But if you wear a moisturizer, you put on a moisturizer cream, which everybody does, you suppress that mechanism. You shut down the skin's responsiveness, and now your skin becomes drier than it ever was before, thus the phenomena of becoming addicted to your moisturizing lotion, where the more you use, the more you need. Now, no skin health company, no skincare company on the planet is going to tell you this because they want to sell you those stupid products. Oh, by the way, when you use a moisturizer, not only are you suppressing your skin's natural moisture factors, but you're interacting with preservatives and fragrances and surfactants and emulsifiers and chemicals that are nasty and don't belong anywhere in or on your body. So what do you do if you have dry skin? Well, dry skin is most often caused by a fat problem. I don't mean too much fat. I mean not enough fat. And I'm talking dietary fat, particularly, specifically, essential fatty acids, EFAs. They are the true cure for dry skin. Now, unfortunately, it's not as simple as just taking EFAs because you've got to make sure you're absorbing them. But the first thing you've got to do is make sure you're getting them. Now, if you're not supplementing with your ultimate EFAs, you're not getting your EFAs because they're not in the food. Now, the word essential, if you've been listening to this program, you know anything about nutrition, you know that essential means you better have it or you're dead. That's how important fatty acids, EFAs are. They're essential. You don't have them, you're dead. Now, if you have a little bit of them, you're not going to die, but you may suffer with some health issues, including dry skin. So the first thing you want to do is get on your ultimate EFAs, first and foremost. If you're absorbing your fats, that's a cure for dry skin right there. However, many of us, if not most of us, especially as we get older, don't absorb our fats. So in addition to taking your ultimate EFAs, three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night, or you can take even more, you want to make sure that you're using supplements that help your body absorb your EFAs, particularly the ultimate enzymes, which are, contain something called lipase and also bile salts, both of which are very important for helping the body process fats. You want to take your ultimate enzymes with your ultimate EFAs, and then you want to start to use fatty nutrients, fatty vitamins, particularly vitamin A and also to a certain extent vitamin E, but especially vitamin A. Vitamin A is ridiculously important, not only for moisturizing the skin, but for drying up oily skin. It goes both ways. We call vitamin A a skin normalizer in the sense that if your skin's too oily, it dries it out. If it's too dry, Dry, it makes it more moist. 20,000, 20,000 international units of vitamin A a day. And again, if you're not supplementing with vitamin A, you're not getting that much. You're, it's very difficult to find, but unless you're eating a lot of liver or organ meat, it's very difficult to get vitamin A from your food. Vegetarians, you're out of luck. Vitamin A is only found in animal products. And don't give me that hoo-ha about beta carotene. It's not vitamin A, no matter what anybody tells you. Let me say that again because that's so important. Beta carotene is not vitamin A. And if anybody tells you that, they don't know what they're talking about. Beta carotene can be converted 
into vitamin A, but not everybody does that effectively. So if you're a vegetarian, that's the best you're going to be able to do. Make sure you're using beta carotene, but if you're not a vegetarian, make sure you're using 20,000 IU of, of vitamin A a day. Topical vitamin C can also have some very interesting effects for skin moisturization because the moisture factors that I was talking about depend on vitamin C for their stimulation and production. So using a fatty vitamin C topically is the best way to address dry skin from a topical standpoint. I would be staying away from lotions and moisturizers unless you want to be addicted to your lotion or moisturizer or if you're absolutely, absolutely miserable, you can get some superficial symptomatic relief from moisturizers, but you run the risk of suppressing your own moisture factors. So for dry skin, I think fats, essential fatty acids, also to a certain extent, uh, saturated and saturated and non-essential fatty acids, omega-9 fats, which are found in olive oil, uh, coconut oil, which is a saturated fat, butter is a saturated fat, but primarily you're looking at essential fatty acids, particularly omega-6 essential fatty acids. You get those in the ultimate EFAs. Make sure you're absorbing them. Last but not least, when it comes to fats, and we'll talk about this over the coming days as we discuss the endocrine hormones, the steroid hormones, the cholesterol hormones, as I'm going to start calling them, Probiotics and good bacteria are very important. They help the body process fats as well. So getting on a good probiotic supplement like the Biolumin Nightly Essence or perhaps making sure you're eating fermented food. And I should say eating fermented food is another strategy. EFAs, make sure you're absorbing your EFAs using digestive enzymes and bile salts. And then also probiotics, good bacteria. And topically, use topical lipophilic vitamin C. You can find that, by the way, at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Look for my Omega-6 healing cream, which is unbelievably moisturizing. Does that help you, CH? Yeah, I appreciate your information. I'm my pleasure. Time listen. And thank you very much, Mr. Kidd. God bless you, my friend. Have a beautiful day, CH, in Alabama. All right, Graziano, my buddy. What's up? Where you been? Uh, no, uh, hey, how's it going, Ben? Going good. What's cooking today? Hey, nothing much. Hey, um, just a quick question. I've been doing good, by the way. But a quick question, and then i got to get back to work. Um, really... Um, my 15 year old, I just wanted to cover, I can't remember, but I thought of calling you uh, T zone acne, and then T-zone on his acne. cheek, and then on his cheek, he's got a this white patch. I know he talks about skin a lot, so that's all This I'm is your kid? Today. This is, did yeah. you say this is your kid? I didn't know you had a kid. I thought you were a kid, Graziana. You, you, you have <laughs> no, a 15, I got three. You got three kids? Didn't you tell me you were yeah. like in your 20s or something? <laughs> Maybe in my 30s. Okay. All right. So you're an old man. That's all right. So here's the deal for for acne. It sounds like a little bit of eczema too for the for the child with yeah, the white patch. Yeah, eczema. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Here's the deal for teenage acne or T-zone acne, which is teenage acne. T-zone is uh, the area that's marked by the forehead. That's the top of the T and in the middle of the face. There's lots of sebaceous glands, sebum glands, oil-producing glands in that T-zone. So when you have T-zone acne as opposed to acne on the sides of the face, you're dealing with hyperactivity of the sebum glands, the oil-producing glands. There's lots of strategies for that, and it typically happens in teenage, during the teenage years because of the relationship of male hormones. There's a surge in male hormones during the teenage years, and that causes excessive oil. First of all, reducing sugar intake is very important. Now, there's nutrients you can use for, for helping stabilize sugar. Those are important, too, but in the interest of time, reducing sugar intake, using the B vitamins, especially vitamin B5, which is almost like a miracle for slowing down oil production. It's pantothenic acid. I'd be using one to four grams a day. You can even do five or six grams if you like and then as we said uh, with our last caller vitamin a the normalizing vitamin is also important both internally and topically use my retinol five percent gel topically not only great for blackheads and oily skin but you also get the anti-aging effects of retinol it's lots more graziano but that's a good start b5 reduce your sugar intake make sure you're using vitamin a topically in the form of retinol and then also internally 20,000 IU a day that's all the time we have for today I- don't 